Why do we dream? I said, why do we dream? That's easy. Um. Uh, or is it? How about we start with this? What happens while we sleep? We go through five different stages of sleep. The first four stages, collectively referred to as non-REM sleep, are involved in shutting your body down to achieve paralysis. Paralysis comes from the release of glycine, an amino acid, from the brainstem to your motor neurons. This makes your body immobile, preparing it for REM sleep. Your brain also slows down to delta waves, which are the slowest. When you enter REM sleep, your brain shifts to alpha waves, which are the fastest. We also have these waves when we are awake. The name REM comes from rapid eye movement sleep, which was discovered by Eugene Asarinsky. As a child, you go directly into REM sleep, but as adults, you must go through all the stages. REM sleep is the most important for dreaming because brain activity is the greatest during this stage. Also during REM sleep, there is an increase in cholinergic activity, which means that the brain releases more acetylcholine than normal. Since your body's motor systems are paralyzed during REM sleep, this extra release of acetylcholine needs to be interpreted as something, so your brain takes it to mean dreams. If you were awake, the acetylcholine would make you move about. Well that's all well and good, but this is where dream becomes controversial. Although there's no doubt that we dream mostly during REM sleep, the process of dreaming and the reason why we dream is debated. There are two main theories when it comes to dreams and their analysis. In this corner, we have Sigmund Freud with his contemporary dream interpretation. Guten Tag, bring it on! And in this corner, we have J. Allen Hobson and his activation synthesis theory. We're gonna activate your synthesis. <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble! I've got it! I now know how to interpret dreams! Freud's theory said... Uh... Hurry up, I need the info. I I'm working on it! I I'm working on it! This is a long book! Cough, cough! So, Freud's theory deals with our unconscious desires manifesting themselves as experiences while we sleep. He thought that dreams represented a disguised fulfillment of a repressed wish and that they are the greatest source of knowledge about the unconscious activity of the mind. He focused largely on the latent content of our minds that he believed surfaced during dreams. The three divisions of this content are our sensory impressions during the night, the residues of the previous day, and our id instinctual drives. Some of these instinctual drives dealt with unconscious feelings of aggression, escape, and sexuality. Freud called these primitive emotions the primary process. In his theory of the mind, the division called the id deals with these primary processes. During sleep, it can act alone and is uninhibited by the ego and superego, the moral balancers of the mind. He interpreted dreams symbolically in terms of the primary processes. So, uh, tell me about your dreams. Well. Lately, I've been having these dreams about Parliament, and what's that mean? Well, I believe it has to do with the many aspects of self involved in decision-making, and maybe your feelings about social situations. That, or sex. Thanks, Doc! There's a lot of criticisms for Freud's theory, though. First of all, when he was gathering his data, he did virtually no experimentation. All he recorded were 40 dreams of his own. Scientists like Michel Jouvet say that dreams pertain more closely to events from a week ago as opposed to the day before, as Freud thought. J. Allen Hobson was one of Freud's most frequent critics. That's why he came up with his own theory. Son, it's time for me to tell you the facts of life. Golly gee willikers, Pop. I'm only six. Well, son, Hobson's activation synthesis theory said that during sleep, neurons are fired at random through the brain, and they send signals to your body's motor systems. 
Since your body is in paralysis during sleep, your brain tries to interpret these messages using your memories. And that's a dream. Ew! Since the limbic system, which controls emotions, is more active during sleep, we can have happy dreams? Take off the mustache! Yow! <laughs> or nightmares. Cat! <laughs> I hate cats! That's aggression! <laughs> and fear! Scary! So Freud's theory was basically about dreams having a specific meaning while Hobson's theory said that it was pretty much a random event that occurs as a side effect of sleeping. So, in modern psychology, Freud's theory has pretty much fallen out of favor. K.O. You see that? You see that? No one can take this action. Now let's discuss some common misconceptions about dreaming. Although many people believe that sleepwalking and talking is us trying to act out the dreams that we're having, this is false. Since our motor systems are still active during non-REM sleep, which is when sleepwalking and talking usually occurs, our body is able to act out the impulses that our brain gives it as opposed to interpreting it as a dream, which is what happens when we receive these impulses during REM sleep. Also, there is a misconception about night terrors. Night terrors when you wake up in a cold sweat and totally freaked out thinking you had this crazy nightmare. Well, the fact is that you were actually in non-REM sleep and you weren't dreaming at all, but you were suddenly shocked awake and when you do, your heart rate increases, your blood pressure increases, and basically you wake up feeling very anxious and it actually has nothing to do with dreaming. Dude, what about prophetic dreams? I totally had a dream last night where I was a rock star. Yeah, those are coincidences. And in your case, I'm sure. If Hobson was right, and dreams are just a side effect of sleep, then we have to ask, why do we sleep? Basically, sleep is a survival function, since all mammals have to go through REM sleep. The fact about sleep is, is that it recharges your ability to do things, to, to know when to approach, when to mate, when to be afraid, when to run for cover. This is basically from an evolutionary psychologist's perspective, but it's what we believe to be the purpose of sleep. As you're sleeping to recharge these basic survival mechanisms, your body just sort of dreams as something to do in the meantime. So basically, dreaming is just a side effect of sleep. So, see you in your dreams! Like in your dreams, I'll be in them with you, but not at least for another week, cause that's what Hobson said. And he's much better than Freud, cause Freud's a quack. Oh, it's what you do to me. Oh, it's what you do to me. I actually don't know how the song goes, the chords. Okay.